Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another episode of Civilization 6 Tips, where today we're going to be taking a look at the Industrial Zone District. Before we get into things today, I would just like to announce that I've partnered up with Chrono.gg again, and there's a really awesome Civ sale going on today, so the gold edition of Civilization 6, so that's the base game plus all of the small leader packs plus Rise and Fall is 65% off, so that's $65 off, um, and you can you can pick up keys for that. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. I do get a small kickback from any purchases that you make, but if you're looking to buy, if maybe you're looking to get into Civ 6, maybe you're looking to buy it for one of your friends for the holidays, that would be a great time to do it because you can get it with every single one of the DLC packs for $65 off. So a really great deal, and once again, that is in the description below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start talking about the Industrial Zone. So the Industrial Zone is a district that you unlock with the Apprenticeship technology. This does mean that it is the last of the yield-producing districts because all the ones past this don't really produce yields. They kind of just give other things. And I think really the only one past this is the Neighborhood and the Spaceport. I might be wrong, but... Either way, it is going to take a good while to get to the industrial zone unless you specifically rush for it. I wouldn't necessarily advise rushing for it, though, because I think its benefits are... They're not good enough to warrant straight up rushing for it. Not, it's not saying that they aren't good, but with the amount of infrastructure that you have in the start of the game, you'll be able to get production from other sources just fine. Um, to boost apprenticeship, all you have to do is construct three mines. So you can see I did that in this game while well, I have a lot more than three. Um, but that's very easy to do. And you can also do that in preparation for setting up where you're going to be placing down your industrial zone. So as far as placement requirements for the industrial zone are concerned, it is it functions like pretty much all of the other land districts. It just has to be on a land tile, it can't be on a mountain, and it can't be on a tile that has a luxury resource. And if you put it on something that has like a, uh, a feature such as forest or jungle or bananas, it will get rid of that feature when you place it down. So if we take a look here, we can talk about some of its adjacency bonuses. So the industrial zone gains one production from every adjacent mine one production from every adjacent quarry, one uh, production from every two adjacent districts, keep in mind that cities count as districts, and one production from an adjacent government plaza. So those last two are the same as pretty much all of the other districts in the game. Um, but the big one here that you're going to be getting adjacency bonus from is from the mines, and that's kind of why I, I put down these mines like I did right here in this, uh, this little thing. Because right now, this tile right here would be a great spot for an industrial zone, and as we can see, we get a plus four adjacency bonus. So when you're placing for uh, your industrial zones, this is the strategy that I most often look for. I look for an area that has a lot of hills surrounding a single tile, just because that's, whenever, that's where you're going to be able to get your mines down, and then you can place the industrial zone and the tile in the center. You can go for the district adjacency bonuses, though, um, but I don't really find that they're all too useful. Maybe in this game I would have other districts here, but those aren't really particularly good district spots for any other districts, so for the most part I would count on your mines to give you your adjacency bonuses. And keep in mind that quarries do work as well, but once again that's kind of just, you have to be a lot more reliant on RNG to give you a good quarry spot that happens to be around some other mines as well, but it is something that you can do. Um, as far as the citizen slot for the industrial zone is concerned, any citizen that you place there will provide plus two production, and the industrial zone itself will provide plus one great engineer point per turn, and it has a one gold per turn maintenance cost. And for those of you that don't know what citizens are in Civ 6, because I find that that's something that a lot of people don't actually know about, um, you can see that for any given district, you can assign a citizen to that district, um, provided that you have a citizen slot, and you get citizen slots from buildings. But if you put a citizen, uh, if you select a citizen to work that tile, then you will just get the citizen yields from the district. So if we had our, our, our industrial zone down already, and we put a citizen to work there, we would get plus two production from that citizen. Let's go ahead and talk about the buildings for the industrial zone, though. The tier 1 building for the industrial zone is the workshop, and it is pretty straightforward. It doesn't really have many uh, complex bonuses. It is unlocked with the apprenticeship technology right alongside the industrial zone, and it provides plus 2 production, plus 1 citizen slot, and plus 1 great engineer point per turn. In addition to this, it does have a production cost of 195 production and a maintenance cost of 1 gold per turn. Um, so as far as the bonuses for the workshop are concerned, I don't think that they're really actually particularly great. Most of the other tier 1 buildings are actually pretty good value, but I don't think that the workshop is really all that great. Um, it is worth getting, at least in some cities though, just because the, you, the great engineer point is pretty helpful, because great engineers do tend to have good bonuses, so the more great engineer points you have, the better. 
Um, since you also do get the one citizen slot from the workshop, that means you can then put a citizen to work in your industrial zone and gain an additional two production from that citizen yield. So without a workshop, you won't have any any citizen slot. So if you do want to have any workers work on that tile, then you do have to build a workshop. So for the most part, I would still say that even though its bonuses are not particularly good, because plus two production, that's like less than a late game mine. Um, but even though the bonus is not particularly good, I think that they're still worth building just for those great engineer points points and for that citizen slot as well. So the tier 2 building for the industrial zone is known as the factory and to cover the factory I figured I would switch over to a game that's a little bit more progressed to show some of the unique things about the factory that I think a lot of people tend to miss out on in Civ 6 because the factory is a little bit more complex than most of the other district buildings. So the factory is unlocked with the industrialization technology. It provides plus three production, plus one citizen slot, and plus one great engineer point. These bonuses are fairly decent. They're pretty comparable to the workshop. Um, the factory also does have a production cost of 390. So once again, I don't think that you're getting particularly good bang for your buck with the factory. Um, but there still are reasons to build the factory, and they are pretty interesting. So. For the factory, the bonus that it provides, so this plus three production, is extended to all city centers within six tiles. This bonus applies once to a city and multiple copies of this building within six tiles of a city center do not provide additional bonuses. So let's go ahead and talk about that real fast right here. So in this game, you can see I'm playing Germany. I have this really sexy district hexagon here with Hanses and commercial hubs and government plaza. And as you can see, I do have a factory constructed in all three of these um, these industrial zones, or I guess they're my Hanses because I'm Germany. Um, if we take a look at one of these cities, though, um, if you thought that the bonus would stack, then you would think that you would get plus three, plus three, plus three. Um, but if we hover over here, we can see that we're only getting plus three production from the factory. So this means we're not getting any additional production from any other factories, which is kind of to be expected. And the reason that you would want to consider this is, say I take a look at, hmm, what would be another city? Oh, see, I have a, I have a lot of these Hansa uh, triangles here, or these Hansa hexagons, just because it's really good with Germany. Um, but if I take one of these cities, so say that Aachen did not have a factory, but these two factories were still here. Really, there is no reason to construct a factory in Aachen, in Aachen. I'm probably butchering that name because I'm not German. But really, there's no reason to construct a factory in this city because I don't get any additional production. So if you have one factory that that covers other cities, don't build a factory in that city because there is literally you gain nothing from it except for that one great engineer point in one citizen slot. So you gain no extra production if you build a factory in a city that is already being affected by a factory. And just um, for those of you who don't know, to check if, you, if you're being affected by a factory that is nearby, you can just click on the city, hover over the production, and you can see that there is the little plus three from factory right there in the production that is gained from buildings. So I'm pretty sure that probably all of my cities in this game are being affected by factories. Yeah, I would bet that all of them are. Um, but check for that little aura, and if the aura is affecting the city, don't build an additional factory because you literally gain no benefit from it. That's not to be said that it's totally pointless though because there is Magnus that exists in the game So Magnus's last uh, one of his last promotions is vertical integration Which makes it so that he receives production from any number of nearby industrial zones Not just the first and once you have vertical integration on Magnus then you get an insane amount of production so like I have all three of these factories here. Um, in both of these cities, the cities, they're only receiving three because they're only receiving the, the aura from one of the factories. But Magnus is causing this city to receive plus 24 production from the nearby factories because all three of these add in. Um, I think both of these are adding in. Probably one or two of these are adding in because they're all within the range of the city. So that is why vertical integration on Magnus is so strong. And that is why if I'm going for a science victory, I still will build a lot of factories just specifically to utilize Magnus. That was kind of long and rambly, but uh, the, the TLDR for that is if you have one factory, it's going to affect nearby cities with the factory production aura. To check if you have it, go ahead and hover over this little production thing, and um, if you notice that you do have the factory aura, don't build another factory in the city because it's going to give you nothing. The only exception to that is whenever you have, whenever you're specifically planning on using vertical integration on Magnus, because then all of those auras will stack up and you'll gain an insane amount of production. I'll probably put a little timestamp to people that want to skip that long, uh, that long explanation and just go right to that. But that is how the factory works.
And the tier 3 building for the industrial zone is known as the power plant and it is unlocked with the electricity technology. It provides plus 4 production, plus 1 citizen slot, and plus 1 great engineer point per turn. It also does have a production cost of 580 production. And much like with the factory, it's the bonus from the power plant extends to, a city, to all city centers within 6 tiles and it only applies once. So I'm not going to explain that again, um, but if you're still confused as to how that works, just go and uh, re-watch re the explanation for the factory. But the power plant functions uh, in the exact same manner to the factory, so try not to build duplicates of, uh, duplicates of it if you don't have to. Um, all in all, I think that power plants also can be pretty good because that is an, that is an additional plus four production, which is fairly decent. Um, that much production, even late game, can still be moderately impactful. And then if you have Magnus with vertical integration and you build a lot of power plants, that production that pr production that production then really stacks up. So power plants, I think, if you reach the point in the game where you have the resources to be able to build them in a reasonable amount of turns, I would definitely go ahead and construct some power plants. And the last thing that I would like to talk about with the Industrial Zone is its district project. So the, the Industrial Zone's district project is known as Industrial Zone Logistics, and all that it does is it provides gold per turn and great engineer points once it is finished. Uh, I think that Industrial Zone Logistics can actually be kind of helpful if you're really needing gold and if you want those great engineer points, because as I've mentioned, some of the great engineers actually can be helpful, especially if you need to build wonders or anything of the sort, or you want to get a little bit of extra production. The great engineers can be good, so... Or, you know, if you're maybe you have a lot of units and your gold per turn is just really terrible, then running industrial zone logistics can actually be moderately helpful. But for the most part, I don't find myself running it too often. But there are some scenarios that I do find it useful, unlike some of the other district projects. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.